Hi guys, um, today we're going to take a look at this latest pickup, this Honeybee Famicom Turbo Controller. It's actually in pretty decent shape, but it needs um, a clean. I don't know if you can see, like, in the turbo slots here, there's a bit of prime and stuff. And I tend to, whenever I get uh, a new controller, just clean it so it's uh, nice and fresh. So it's not a particularly difficult job. I'm just going to show you a few of the tools we need to um, refurbish the controller. To start off, we're going to use a tiny little crosshead screwdriver, maybe some tweezers. Clean the actual board, cotton wool buds, and some alcohol. Any kind of alcohol, like uh, surgical spirit or isopropyl alcohol. So let's get started. I'm just going to flip it over and uh, take the screws out and see what lies within. Okay, so there's six screws on the back here. I guess they coat the screws in some kind of uh, some kind of glue or some kind of sealant or something. You can always tell if a system has been opened before by that little sound. You've got to be a bit careful with these. Uh, some of the cheaper controllers I've seen before, it's very easy just to strip the screw. And once you've stripped strip the screw, there's very little you can do. These have all come out fine. Just flip it over and let the six screws come out. That's all six of our screws. Let's uh, stick them in the ice cube tray so we know. What I tend to do when I break something down is uh, go in order, in what order you took them out and which order to put them back in again. So let's pop the back off here. Kind of similar to a uh, Famicom controller. We've got a little bend here in the top. It stops the, the cable from being pulled and then tugging on the wires. There's our PCB there. Our D pad, our A and B buttons. You see the uh, D pad's kind of filthy there, it's got some kind of age old fluff. Got the rest of the buttons, the turbo switches, they've got metal contacts on them as well. Front and back half, all the pads, all the buttons, and then the PCB. And once the rubber pads are clean and the copper pads are clean, they should make a really good connection. And when you press the button, They'll be really responsive and back to new how they used to be. Okay, so here we are at the sink. We've got our front and back case. We've got our rubber parts. We've got our buttons. A, B, directional. Um, our turbo switches. And these little panels here. Now, one bit of advice I'll give about sticking everything to the sink. Make sure you remember how many bits went in. And if you pull the plug and like something small like this is still in there, it'll just go straight down the drain. you never see it again. Um, I've made that mistake a few times, so just keep stock of what you put in. Make sure everything's gone from the sink once you've uh, once you finish cleaning, and then uh, take take it out. You don't want to um, make the water too hot because plastic things warp. Grab things and just carefully scrub them. The reason why we use a toothbrush is because it gets into all the grooves. There's like a lip around the edge of the controller. The uh, rubber pads, just be very gentle with them because they have a tendency to tear. These things are 30 years old and it's a piece of rubber, but if you're gentle with it, it's okay. But I've known it that the center bit tears out and then you're stuck and you kind of have to find a replacement. So just go as gently as you can, pop out the rubber bit in the center and then just kind of scrub around it. The D pad here is probably one of the worst offenders, it's got gone all over it. So just get in the grooves. Okay, so this is kind of the point where you ask yourself, is everything out of the sink? So you kind of do a brief check on what you've got. Two holes. The rubber for the D-pad, the rubber for the buttons, the rubber for the start and select. Both turbo switches, the panels that connected, that lay on top of the turbo switches. Your A, your B button, and the directional pad. Rinse off the bits of cleaned and make sure that they're clean from Dirt and grind. At this point you kind of see if there's anything. That yeah, looks pretty clean. Got all the bits out of the sink. What I'm doing is just getting off as much ex excess water as I can. And then all you can do really is leave them to, to dry naturally. Okay, so as far as cleaning up the rubber pads, 
Um, I don't know if you can see on camera, but they're, they're shiny. They've kind of got a sheen to them. And that's what we don't want. What they should look like is completely matte. Um, so a way of getting the shine off these and making them matte again is just very gently popping it out with your finger, taking a piece of uh, A4 paper and just drawing a quick line, maybe once or twice, to just rub away the tiniest layer from the pad. And it just brings them back to kind of a matte finish as opposed to a shiny finish. Now we've uh, cleaned up our buttons and rubber contacts and outer casing. It's time to pay some attention to the circuit board, the PCB. Um, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but the copper pads where the rubber pads make contact with are all kind of scummy. They're not, they're not, they're not clean. They look sticky and kind of covered in weird residue. And all that's going to do is stop the Stop it making good contact. So what we're going to do, it's pretty easy, you just put some alcohol on a cotton bud, clean them up, make them shiny again, and then hopefully that should solve the problem. So let's grab some more surgical spirit here, and dip the cotton bud in the surgical spirit. Um, grab another cotton bud and dab off the excess because you don't want to Drown the circuit board and alcohol just enough. So I'm going to start with the D pad. Just going to circular motion, just go over the pad, make sure all the grime is removed and it's shiny again. You can see already the cotton bud's getting dirty. It's partially where the copper is kind of oxidized and partially where it's just the gunks kind of seep through onto the So I guess the next thing to do is to uh, reassemble the pad. Okay, now we've got our circuit board cleaned, the rubber parts cleaned, the outer shell cleaned, all the buttons, hard plastic parts cleaned. All that's left to do is uh, reassemble the pad. So what we start with is our D-pad. Put that in. Um, our buttons. A and B. Uh, these panels, I think they go in first. And then our turbo switches go. I'm trying to figure out which way they go in. There's a little notch on the bottom, and that fits into these grooves. So I'm assuming they just fit in like that. One there. And one there. Okay. Next, we stick in our rubber pads. Start and select. Followed by the D pad. And then there's a little notch telling you which direction to put those back onto. And our A and B. Then we get our circuit board. Carefully lay it back on top. There's some posts that hold the circuit board into position, so it's aligned perfectly with the pads underneath. Again, the cord here is held in, if I can remember which way it goes. It's kind of fed through, and bent back on itself to prevent any force on the cable affecting these quite fragile cables here. Push 
position, make sure it's seated properly. Then take the back piece, pop it on. Make sure everything's aligned correctly. Got six screws back in, which are safe and sound, and a little ice cube tray. If you feel any resistance when you're screwing back in, don't force it. It could just mean that you need to wiggle the cases so that the, the hole is perfectly in line with the hole underneath. Don't force it otherwise you'll end up doing some damage because it is made of plastic after all. Okay, happy with that. And there we have it, the reassembled Honeybee Hudson Joy card with Amicom. No grime. In the turbo buzzing holes actually feeling nice and clicky they move a lot freer than they did before buttons feel nice start and select feel good everything feels like it should now the only thing about cleaning these up is that after 30 years of being covered by hand grease and dirt it's all well and good clean off but it tends to leave it with a kind of dull matte finish. Um, but there is something we can do to bring that back. Um, with just a bit of polish, a bit of pledge on a rag. Just go over it once and it brings back the uh, original shine. So that's what we're going to do now and I'll show you what it looks like after we've done it. Okay, so here we are with the pledge. It's just going to bring back the shine to the plastic. So I'm just going to spray it a very tiny bit the end of a big towel. Not too much I'm looking at anywhere this plastic just just rub it all in. Okay, and then with the cloth just kind of polish it up. You start to see already the shine is coming back to the plastic. have it. Our controller back and clean, shiny, functional and ready to go.